Ladies and gentlemen, epic music ensues for game number three of this best of three between these two Zerg players vying for a qualifying spot at the WCS Winter Circuit Championship Qualifier. They have one more best of five to go after winning this, but only one of them can advance. Spawning in the top right position as the red Zerg player representing Carnage Esports, it is Namshar. His opponent is the blue Zerg player spawning in the bottom left-hand position of Ruins of Seras, representing Team Liquid.net. It's Vortex. Much hype, much cool music. This is by far, this track by the way, is by far my favorite track from Legacy of the Void, uh, as far as the in-game music is concerned. What's your favorite track? I've got a, uh, I've got the uh, collector's edition soundtrack as well, and that's actually really good. Uh, but those aren't the same as the in-game sounds at play when you're actually on ladder or something like that, and they do sound pretty darn epic. Right, so we have hatch, gas, pool again from both players. Now Vortex was the aggressor in both game number one and game number two. In game one, the super early pool uh, bought him a couple of queens. Uh, bought him a lot of pressure against the natural, and bought him time to consolidate a gold base. That was pretty sexy from Vortex. Again, third base, not gold this time around. Important to note that. Uh, game number two, he also tried to be the aggressor with the earlier Baneling Nest and the earlier Roach Warren, and just trying to hammer down Namshar. Unfortunately, Namshar was just too strong economically, uh, simply because he was able to comfortably hold station from the early attack. So this brings us, of course, to game number three. And well, I mean, anything can happen on this map. It's a very, very wide open map. As you can see, once you leave the natural expansions, there's just so much open space, which means there's a lot of ground to cover. You can't just position four or five overlords and expect to be able to see everything your opponent's doing. You have to be relatively close to your opponent's ramp, and you have to be relatively close to your own. And what happens in the middle? Well, no one's ever going to know. It's like Vegas. Oh, we have got gold base. Pardon me. But no one ever takes these until we get to a split map situation. So, we will see. The first couple links are coming out from Namshar, and they're not just a couple. They're actually a total of six of them with a Baneling Nest on the way. And these groups of links are going to pass like ships in the night by the looks of things. Oh, so close to picking off a Zergling there, but unable to do so. So, Vortex knows that there are six links incoming. He's probably going to have to get an extra couple for defense. He is indeed. And he's got Queens blocking the ramp as well as the Baneling Nest completes for him. And uh, Namshar is splitting his links up. I wonder if that's because he wants these to be Banelings, but I suspect uh, this is going to be anticipated from Vortex. So additional Zerglings are going to force this back. Two Banelings are going to try and sneak in. All very Cloak and Dagger. We have two defensive Banelings here from Namshar. And what? Ha well, it's actually just the two uh, Banelings, to be honest. Uh, from Vortex. Now, I'm sure it's actually going home with Vortex in pursuit right now, so potential for these Banelings to try and get some damage done if Vortex isn't watching. We'll have to keep an eye on that dot on the minimap. Vortex now moving up, sees the two defensive Banelings, is a little bit... A little bit apprehensive, and when is Namshar going to get a couple of spare APMs to sneak those Banelings in? There are now four defensive Banelings on the top of the ramp, and here we go. We have action on both sides of the map simultaneously. Is Vortex going up? He's not actually, so that means he might be able to spot this back home in the meantime. Vortex? Vortex? Oh, just! Only just in time, and that kills three workers. Fair enough. Uh, if he was another second later, that would have been between 5 and 7. So, uh, that was reasonably good from Vortex there. A single Baneling is going to come down and see if he can sneak. Oh, very good. Very, very good. And he just moves into the waiting pack of Zergling. Kills all of them and immediately plonks down his third. What an excellent move there from Namshar. Play of the game. So far, anyway. I mean, there'll be more. Don't worry. Right. Namshar moving out with his Lings and Banelings now, knowing that there's no longer any threat of Vortex sneaking into his natural while he's gone. Queen here, trying to prod at an Overlord, not chasing it because the Overlord can't go over the high ground here. And that will keep the Overlord safe. Uh, this has forced Vortex into making an awful lot more Zerglings and Banelings to defend here. And as a result, it means that Namshar is ahead economically. He's got 46 drones to 36 from Vortex right now. So all Namshar has to do is show that he's able to put on a non-zero amount of pressure as those Lings need to watch out. 
All right. Well, two lings, uh, two bailings for three bailings rather, and all the units do actually uh, evaporate each other there, which means Namshar is very, very slightly ahead. I mean, his hatch is a bit behind, I suppose, at the third, but he's nine workers up on Vortex right now. And economically, throughout these early exchanges, Namshar just seems to be a little bit better today at uh, squeezing in a couple of extra rounds of drones and being a bit more economical. Now. Vortex is going for the Spire for the second game in a row. Namshar is going for the Overseer Cocoon into the base as the Spire is building for the second game in a row. A couple of links from Vortex will be able to pick off a few workers. The workers kill count is now 3-2. to two. But once again, Overseer sees all. And Namshar with... I mean, his timing is just superb on this scouting. He's just going to move straight out. Is there another queen on the logo? There is, actually. Vortex might be able to kill him with that. But Namshar changes course at the last second. That will be fine. And oh, Namshar is saying, right, forget this whole uh, Hydralisk thing. We're going to go ahead and Nidus it up. So expect to see a Nidus Worm about there. And he's basically saying, as your mutas fly across the map, I'm going to walk into your base and demolish absolutely everything. This is very entertaining indeed. We have a spore call. Is that positioned to stop a scout? It isn't. But the Nidus network is, well, it's kind of deep inside the main base. I think if, uh, oh, so that's an overseer for Vortex. He technically could come in and spot this, but the Nidus is now there. And the problem with that is that all the roaches are kind of at the front right now. So what are you going to do? What exactly are you going to be putting in there, Navishar? You need to decide at some point soon. Here comes the Overseer. Well, there's the Nidus going down. Oh, do the Mutas see it? The Mutas saw it. The Mutas see it, and is that going to be Curtains? I don't know. Every single unit in a 12-mile radius is killing off this Nidus network now. And we have transfusers from the Queens on the Nidus. Only a couple of Queens get through here. And I don't think that's going to end up being terribly successful at all. A second Nidus network is now being put down. And, uh, well, I mean, Vortex is all over this. What have you got? Inside... Basic? I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, God, that didn't work at all. Sacrificing a Baneling for that as well for good measure. And I have to say... That was excellently put down by Vortex, again, reacting at the last moment, but successfully spotting the Nidus network, and Namshar is shut down with no anti-air right now. He's only got Queens, he's gonna have to send Roaches out across the map. He's got Queens and Spore Crawlers, that's it, there are no Hydralisks in this game. He is trying to go for the Infestation Pit, but this is now a decent number of Muters waltzing on in, trying to kill everything in sight. They're trying to pick off the Queens, one of them goes down very, very quickly indeed. Spots one with a bit more energy. Won't be able to get that one because it runs back to the Spore Crawler and gives the other a transfuse. But have no doubt, Namshar is in a lot of trouble right now. If he could kill off a Spore Crawler as well, oh, it looks like he's going to do that. He just wants to kill everything at this third. He's saying all your base are belong to us right now. And this third base is effectively Vortexes for the taking. Yes, there are Roaches defending. What can they do though? It looks like he's going to be able to launch a counterattack. I mean, what else can Namshar do at this point? But these number of Lings plus the Queens plus a couple of Muters back at home means that this is going to get blunted out. The Roaches are doing a decent amount of damage. It's just that Vortex can constantly produce stuff to take it out. And in the meantime, there's no answer for these Muters. They are absolutely running riot. So while Namshar's attack slowly bleeds out over on this half of the map, this third base is completely and utterly destroyed, and this gives Vortex a huge advantage in this game. This basically puts him into a winning position, but he still needs to close it out. If he can pick off a large number of these queens, actually, he'll be doing it very well for himself as well, but he needs to be careful of those spore crawlers doing incredible damage to these muters. So he might be able to pop by and, oh, if he sees the Hydra then. He might be able to sneak in there, but right now he just cares about denying access to the third base location. And why does he care about that? Because right now, Vortex is comfortably ahead in both minerals and especially the gas. And even though there are Hydras out now, this time there are Hydras out in a position where Vortex is a base up on his opponent. Oof! That is a huge number of Mutalists. He is not messing around here at all, is he? And, uh, well, infestation bit hard at work here. I mean, you never know what a couple of Fungals can do. Fungalu can very easily win people games. Uh, but he's trying to pick off the Hydras as they pop out. And these Muters, I mean, we, we could end up getting to critical mass here at some point. The two flocks of Muters now join each other. And this really, truly has become a murder of Muters. These Queens will not be able to last too long. And, well, the extra Hydras that are popping out are dying as fast as they can spawn. I feel like if Namshar had the opportunity to go critical mass, yes, there was a chance for him to basically stop this from happening. But as it stands right now, these Muters are absolutely cakewalking this game. 
And Vortex continuing to apply more pressure, picking off the third base for the second time. Sees three Hydralisk, takes out three Hydralisk, sees three more Hydralisk. Are you going to take that out as well? No, he's being patient. And that's because Vortex is very sensibly moving into Ultralisk production. These Mutas are not going to be able to buy him infinite, uh, infinite amounts of value forever. And I, I really like the fact that he's just sacking them to take out Hydras, though, because, oh, wow, for the third time this game, the third base is taken down. So, so good from Vortex here. We have a counterattack from Namshar, and it's not much of a sneaky counterattack as well. Instantly seen by the Overseer. GG, and good luck as Liquid Vortex, ladies and gentlemen, takes the series 2-1 to one and advances to the best of five qualifier match here in the WCS Winter Challenger.